Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Heather Lewis and today we are going to be making over this third piece to the set. This piece is a French provincial desk. It does have six spacious drawers and it's got a lot of beautiful curves. I'm so excited about this piece because all six hardware pieces are still intact and none is missing. Just like in the last video, this desk is pretty much structurally sound. It just needs a cosmetic upgrade. Clearly some kid got some marker to the top of this desk and it's just not my style. So we're gonna go ahead and change it up. Before anything else, let's go ahead and take off the hardware. To take off the hardware, I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver. You could also use a drill if you wanted to, but usually this hardware is pretty loose already that, you know, it's pretty easy to get off and a drill is not necessary. When I realized that all of the hardware was intact and none of it was missing, I was so excited. The style and the detail is just so pretty. Whenever I picture French provincial hardware, this is always what I picture. This is definitely like the classic style. I will say I honestly didn't even think about this drawer when I was giving a description and so there's not only six spacious drawers but there's actually seven because you got one of these like pencil holder drawers right in the middle here. So as I was taking the hardware off, I actually noticed that this desk is from a high quality furniture brand called Dixie. Dixie furniture is known to be really high quality. One way you can tell that a piece is high quality is if you look at how the drawer is actually put together, you can see that there's like these tongue and groove joints, which is one way that you can tell that it's a nice quality piece. So that's really awesome. And that's probably why everything is so structurally sound, even though it's pretty old. So obviously I am going to be keeping this hardware because I am going to be putting it back on in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead, put these in a bag and we'll get on to the next step. So at this point, this piece is ready to be sanded down. I am gonna be using my DeWalt palm sander and I have a medium grit on, I think it's a 220 grit. So we're gonna leave this on and just only sand all of the flat surfaces. All of these curved surfaces, I will be sanding my hand because I don't wanna dull them down at all. So I'm gonna go ahead, plug this in and get my respirator on and start sanding. I want to take a second to say if you've made it this far into the video and you are enjoying the type of content that you are watching, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't yet. Something so simple like that helps small channels like mine grow tremendously. And I also wanted to thank you guys for 4,000 subscribers. We are already well on our way to 5,000 subscribers, which sounds impossible to me, but you guys are making it possible. So without all of your guys' support like this, it wouldn't be possible. And I just want to say thank you all so, so much. It really does mean the world for me. I'm trying to make this YouTube channel my career, and one day at a time, we are getting closer and closer to that goal. So now that sanding is done, there's a lot of sawdust or sand dust all over the piece as well as just dirt and grime and everything that was on it because it's been sitting in a garage for a while. 
So I've got my white bucket here and I've got warm water and Dawn dish soap. And along with that, I have my microfiber towel. You could use an old rag too if you don't have any microfiber towels, but I just find that this really helps pick everything up, especially all of the dust. So I really like to use that. Now I'm gonna set this down and make sure to wipe everything down because the next step will be primer and we don't want anything on it when the primer goes on. So now that all the prep work is done, the sanding, the cleaning, taking off the hardware, everything, and we're ready for paint, I need to get this piece moved inside because at this point it's way too cold to be painting outside. It's like 25 degrees. That's why I've got like the hat on, jacket on, just got a lot of layers. We are actually getting our first snowfall of the year. So let's go ahead and show you a clip of that and then we'll have this piece moved inside and ready to paint. Is this going to work? Because I'm a little blinded. All right, you guys, it's been a few days later and obviously we are in a different setup right now. Honestly, it's been quite a bit of a shit show trying to figure out what to do. And I have to apologize right away. This is not the most convenient or not the most aesthetically pleasing to watch, but this should hopefully be the only video where I'm in this setting. Right now, I am trying to figure out how to heat the garage and light the garage while having the garage doors closed in the middle of winter in Minnesota. So hopefully we'll have that figured out by next week's video. But for now, this is what we've got and this is what we're working with. I've got this big industrial light right behind you guys. So it's facing me and I might be blind by the end of this video, but that's okay. I believe we left off needing to prime the piece. So so I am using my Zinzer 123 primer, of course. I just stirred it up, so now it's ready to be applied. A little bit of a spoiler alert, I did figure out a solution to heating the garage, which you will actually see in next week's video. Unfortunately, it did take some time to figure out, which is why this video is a week late. But on top of figuring the heat out, I think I also figured out the lighting. I think I got it just right. Nothing will beat the natural sunlight, obviously, but it definitely beats this yellow tone that you guys are seeing now. But also, there really isn't any ventilation down here so it's really not ideal to paint inside all winter long and that's why I thought it was so important to be able to continue painting in the garage and now with the heat and the lighting it'll all be good. Now that the primer's dry, I am going to start painting on the same paint that I used in the last video. If you have not yet checked that out, make sure to go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link to it up there. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just getting ready to paint that on. This desk is the third piece to the set that I am trying to complete. So for that reason, I'm trying to make it as identical to the other two pieces as possible. I'm gonna go mix up the paint and then we can start painting. 
With this lighting, it's hard to see this light sage green color, but once I show the reveal, you'll see it a lot better. It did take three coats to reach full coverage, and between coats, I spray painted the hardware. I chose the same black color that I used on the dresser, and I'll make sure to leave a link to that down below if you want to check it out. As for the top coat though, I wanted the same finish as the other pieces in this set, so I used the same melange clear matte finish, but the lighting was pretty poor, so I didn't record it, which means it's finally time for the final reveal. Like no 